Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Echoes, and I'm a VTuber, and I'll be go going over episode 9 of Gundam Wish for Mercury. Um, for some reason, the English title is different than the original one. I'll mention it, the original when I see it, but I actually like the original title better. Um, this episode is titled More Than a Childhood Friend, but Not True Love. So pretty much it confirms that this is a shitty episode. So... Uh, in the beginning of the episode, we pretty much get a start off with a flashback where you can see Guel is fighting against a lot of people in duels as he has to defend him. Uh, flashback to before the first episode where Guel is defending his position as Holder. And then uh, Shadik's, um, I guess, harem is talking about it at least. And, and, and they're like, why isn't Shadik fighting? And he says it's because of Miorine. And here he talks to her. And she's like very frustrated with the duels and everything. And she always believed that she's just an ornament, right? And um, she mentions like, why do you not actually duel for her position, uh, for the position of Holden? And he says that it's just boring. For whatever reason. And she may have considered that to be a good thing, I guess. And then she mentions again that she's going to try to get out of the place. But yeah. You could, uh, here's where they kind of foreshadow a bit that Shidi does actually like Miurine. But for whatever reason, he doesn't say anything. <laughs> um, and then we get the opening again. No uh, changes here from what I can tell. And then uh, in, when we get to this, we get back to the present. Where uh, pretty much Miurine, Saleta, Shidi, and then I think one of... The harem lady. I, I don't remember their names. So they all kind of grouped together, but uh, they're discussing uh, the co the terms in the company. And like they can't like break the rules or they get expelled. What are they talking about? And uh, Shadik uh, tries to offer uh, Mirene terms in order to for Mirene to remain present and then they remain functionality. But Shadik gains control of the entire company. We will not plan new startups. And also for being... The, the emphasis of this episode in general is trust. Because Shadik does not trust anyone. So that is an important uh, point just in general. And she, he's like, the terms aren't bad, right? And then Mirai is obviously questioning it. Are you the one who rewrote the rules? And you can say, this is pretty much him not actually saying yes, but it is a yes. He's like, yep, yep, I did. I did without actually saying he did. And he's like, why do you think so? And he says it's just too convenient for all the parties involved. And who else will come to your rescue? And here is where uh, Mirai proposes the duels, which is seen as the, the, what's the word? The... Deciding factor in almost everything, obviously. This is a show that is based around duels, especially with the school. And this is the, actually the title I like the more, the one the more. It says, if I could take one more step toward you. <sighs> also, like, the funny thing is that the, both of the, the titles refer to Shadik. If I could take one more step towards you, also refers to Shadik, as he is the one who is not able to take the extra step necessary. And because of that, he is the one who falters. I'll explain more on that later. And also the current episode uh, title, More Than Childhood Friend But Not True Love, also versus Shidi because he is a childhood friend. He does like her. But he, it's, it's not really considered proper love because of not him not trusting anybody, including the person he likes. So that's the problem. <laughs> so yeah. Um... Mirene will talk about that more later. And then they do the, the terms of the duel. Six member team battle rules apply. Looks like Shadik is known for team battles as he goes with himself and then his five harem members. So yeah. And, and the, the problem is that Earthing House doesn't even have that many mobile suits, so that's the problem. And also pilots. They only have mostly two, which is Sulata and Choo Choo. The rest aren't pilots. And it would seem that this is like 
a guaranteed losing battle because they have the Gundam. Earthlings have the Gundam, even though it's just one Gundam. Bully love can be such a burden. Let's see. And here's where Mirai uh, tries to live stream the whole thing as a form of advertising for the company because if, because at this uh, point, if, uh, if the Earthian house is able to defeat all the members of all the houses, it's pretty much the best advertisement for their company, saying, "Hey, we beat them all. Um, buy our products, please, because you know we're strong." And our results show with the duels. Here's where. You need to request uh, chain the start regulations back to what it used to be so that she can create her company. And then Shadik is more, what does he want? What's his stake? It is to tr own a transfer ship of the Gundam. So he wants a company. And here, this is probably the foretold boy problems that this girl would face was that this girl, who seems to be a very popular young lady, has a lot of boyfriends. Um, and, and she holds a grudge against uh, this lady. Because this lady is genuinely really popular with men. But this girl on the other side, she just has a lot, she has a lot of boyfriends. And she's generally popular by men too. So it looks like uh, this um, other lady has a, a bit of a grudge. Which is a, it's more like a humor point than something serious, but we'll see. Grassley House never lost. They look at the stats, and then they said they may bar the Fair Act. Um, most likely, that's not the case, which we'll see. But they do have to borrow mobile suits. Gundams kill the pilots? No, they don't. And then uh, Miriam will figure out the whole thing to make uh, the team battle work. And here's where uh, Nika says that uh, Shadik is disgusting. And everyone, and he, she pretty much mentions how his efforts are crushing the hopes of all the people involved. And he says, I never want to duel. And, why? and, and this important point is where that doesn't concern a go between. So pretty much it confirms that Nika has this sort of like deal with Shadik. That's separate from her relationship with the Earthian house. So she's not able to speak because of it. Uh, eventually we'll probably learn about what, what's going on here. Because if, um, depending on how things go, she will probably be the only connection to Shadik once Mirene decides to cut things off with him more sternly. But we'll see. And here's where uh, they're looking for, uh, what do you call it? Um, so let us looking for support for uh, getting more pilots. And then she asks Guel for some help here, but um, he refuses. Normally he's the one who accepts any duel, but because of the um, ultimatums said by his father, he says that he can't. He says that because his uh, dad uh, told him not to duel and she said that she understands because he is following his father while she is following her mother. So that definitely makes sense in this case. We'll do the best that we can. And he is probably trying to figure out stuff. Uh, he, it looks like Guel still has to figure out what he wants to do because he's pretty much rendered powerless. And then this is a, they always like using this, uh, these uh, diagrams, which is like visual representations. So you see the two tomatoes are Saleta and uh, Mirene. And then the six tomatoes are obviously Shadik and his harem. So it is a visual metaphor here. And also important point here is that um, Mirene uh, says to Shadik that, that you only see me as a symbol of the company. He only considers her to be an object, even if he likes her. Still, something that needs to be obtained or taken hold of, but not something on an equal basis. That way, the rest of the group, won't. he's sort of taking ownership of her. And in a way, because that he's not that much different from everyone else. And also, you could see, one second, let me go back here. 
you know, only see his ornament, pretty much confirm. But and he says that's not true. I, I'm different from the all. And then she says, stay out. I can't trust you. So you can see that there's this very clear boundary that's made. Because because uh Mirini's greenhouse, right? It is pretty much her safe haven. She only lets people inside who she trusts. So that's why there's emphasis of the boundary and being able to enter or not enter the door, right? But here, she says very cl clearly that she does not trust him to uh, enter the house and, and to enter the house, meaning that she doesn't trust him at all. And also in a way, he doesn't trust her. It's not an equal relationship. In a way, if he enters, for example, right, that is a form he is able to enter with her permission, then in a way, it is more equal. And she, that is a form of trust. But since he cannot enter, then it means that she cannot. And also keep in mind that before, Guel was the one who barged in. Anyone who enters without her permission are, in a way, violators of her boundary as well. He does respect the boundary, but also having this so clearly stayed to him is definitely hurting him here. You can see from his face. He's like... <gasps> He's like that kind of thing. It's more like, it's really shocking to him because it was never so clear stayed to him before. He's already coming from there. And he says that only her, she can protect her. I'm her groom. I'll believe in my bride. So this is the important part here where so, the difference between Saleta compared to all the other guys so far, or mostly just Guel and Shadik, is... um. She trusts in um, Mirene's decisions. For better or worse, you know, like, Selena is known for being very naive, right? But in a way, her honesty is her greatest point here, where she says, I will believe in Mirene's decisions, and I'll support her in the entire way. So in a way, it is that equal playing field, right? It's not just, I own you, like what Shidiko said. It was more like, let's walk on the same path together. And that's the main difference. It's uh, the whole uh, difference in relationship dynamics here, which uh, leads to making such a big difference. Got them in your bride. I'll take them. So also you could say here, he, he considers romantic things as taking things. Like he has a harem with five girls, right? He also likes me. He wants her too. In a way, they are all his possessions in the end. And then they, uh, let's see, let's go back here. So it looks like they're only able to provide four extra mobile suits because Choo Choo has her trainer, Ariel's Ariel, so that's six. So they were able to get enough just to at least satisfy the conditions of the battle. And they can't, and the Pale Group cannot pro provide the Fair Act because it looks, it's a secret. Um... They found about us, it'd really be an uproar. So, I don't know what finding out about us is. It referring to the whole different Elons, the, the, the main Elon, and then all the others with disposable ones with the same face, or just some sort of hidden secret? We'll probably figure out more about this later. And also, ladies say, you, uh, instead of how long you better bring back results so they better actually do something and then you see uh, his hair, uh, Shadik's harem talks a little bit and you get a little bit more uh, idea on their personalities you can see Shadik is like tying up his hair showing that he's determined here and he's checking uh, with all the system making sure it's all well maintained Kind of cool seeing all the six items enter the battlefield. And then you see um, the, pretty much the reactions of all the hair members in general by the school. Yeah, and she's the most popular. <laughs> she's like the idol of the harem. Miss Renee. Find a designated point or object. And then they start the battle. So what's interesting here, uh, I'm not going to go too much into the battle details. Maybe someone else will. But you also get their names and positions. Uh, usually, they're, they're all pretty strong people. 
let's see. So they're all very powerful, and their main emphasis is okay. So, so there. So Shadik's main strategy is to decapitate all the weaker members, and then focus on Salada in the end. That's his strategy. And that uh, super papa girl is like, I'll show you what happens when you lay hands on another girl's man. And, and this girl's like, what the heck are you talking about? John Van Simmons? Who the heck is he? Number 12 on my list of backup boyfriends. She has so many boyfriends. <laughs> 12 of them. That's a lot. And she's like, eh. <laughs> like, what the heck? And you see that uh, Lilik and Till, they both have a very close relationship. They're uh, able to work with each other here. He, and also he's a mechanic here. He's not a pilot. And they're all decapitated. And she she does it to that uh, other girl specifically. He's like, ha ha ha, how do you feel? It's like, very much feels like a grudge. And he's like, what, what am I doing? Like, why is he like, remaining on the sidelines? Because he's sort of because, doing that because his father, and then his father's like, uh, I'm going to expel you from the school, so uh, just work for one of my companies because, you know, that's better than uh, you just doing nothing, right? And also the emphasis on trust, right? I can't have faith in you after losing. So in a way, his father only sees him as a way of being able to do about what he wants to do. If his son is not able to do that, then he's useless, practically. And Gul is shocked here, and he says, I have a backup plan. And don't question what I think. I, I'm pretty sure uh, what Guel he does here is either he will, he will obey his father as he's always done, or he will break, break through, and then join the Earthian House. So I, I think next episode we'll probably figure out whether what what Guel's decision actually is, whether he obeys his father or decides to join the Earthian House anyway, because he wants to show off himself a bit more. So yeah. And then you see pretty much me uh Soleta getting uh, cornered here. Let's see. Or more Choo Choo actually. Oops. Choo Choo is the one getting cornered. So that she is the Congo the last one. And she says that uh he says that uh, Sula's just clinging on to Miri and they, like, it's like, he's trying to, in a way, depreciate Soleta's role with Miri Rene in order to make himself feel better. So in a way, he doesn't really have, not that he doesn't have faith, it's more like, he, he doesn't want to make himself feel better because of his own decisions that have already harmed his relationship with Miri Rene as it is. Like, he's constantly misstepping, and he's trying to make himself feel better, pretty much. So that's where it goes. And then they uh, all activate that, uh, I think they call it antidote. Here. And, and they pretty much, uh, what do you call it? They undo the permit link uh, ability with the anti-Gundam technology that was originally used in the prologue by the Grasley uh, mobile suits. So they activate it to, uh, to uh, deactivate the gun bits. Anti-gun format protection. So they did still have it. So that's why, uh, that's why um, Prospera is taking a look at it, making sure, like, hey, can, can my Gundam go against the anti-Gundam format? I'm pretty sure uh, that she was already expecting this to happen, as this anti-Gundam format is what led to her husband's death, and almost the death of herself and Aerie in the prologue. And she's like, oh, I can't do this by myself. I can't fight alone. I thought the gun format, she's nothing special. And here's there. And then you see that, um, let's see. And here's where the others have a plan, which we'll uh, see in fruition uh, a bit later. And uh, Ariel's being broken down a lot. And let's see. It's hard for me to tell who's referring to who's angry. I think it's the Ariel's angry. And she says, I always, and so it's like, I always rely on you for everything. But this time, she wants to do something. So 
it sort of shows the role between the Ariel and uh, Sleta about um about how they always work together, and sometimes one dominates over the other depending how it goes. But instead, you can see that uh, Sleta is taking a step forward to take more control than before. In a way, she is leaving the original cradle that she was in before. So this is an important uh, form of growth. Now I'm really I don't know what I can do, but is that selfish? Oh yeah, and then here's where she does her own thing. Let's see. Because whenever this interface activates, it always refers to the aerial or whatever is in the, controlling the aerial itself. Uh, as like another form because it always seems to activate separately from uh Soletta, which is interesting see b c g t sis so it's some sort of gundam system I, I we don't know what type of system this is exactly maybe someone else can break that down but this always activates when the area acts independently and so like i'm glad One sec. Second. Then they have the the explosion. Let's see. And here is that she mentions that you're still here. So you'll see this when the colors, since the permit link score activated again, even when they're disabled before. And they change blue, which is extremely important here. As, um, because as we mentioned a few episodes ago, there's a difference between the permit link red and permit link blue. Uh, red always meant that it was sort of not like it's the typical color of the permit link, right? It always shows a dissonance with the pilot. But the blue is when something is in complete control. It is like goes against the typical permit, uh, permit link color and its limitations, and thus it's blue. Uh, it, it shows a perfect compatibility with the technology. So yeah, so this is incredibly important as it shows that the aerial now is in more control than before and can be controlled even with the with the antidote being activated. And you see that all the funnels are now or gun bits are acting independently and are pretty much, uh, you see with this uh, motion here is that they remove the influence of the antidote in the surrounding area and thus they disable it. He's like, what the heck? Antidote has been overridden and it constant constraints aren't working. And oh yeah, here is where uh, Prospera unexpectedly has a tear come from her eye. Very short moment, but it does show that th it, this can mean two things. One is that she's happy that this blue light is activated. Or the second thing is that it feels like a form of realized revenge because the antidote killed her husband and her friends and also nearly killed her. But being able to go like, to override that very same format that led to those deaths can be such a sweet and relieving feeling. And that's the difference with the aerial against all other Gundam types, is this could go against the original antidote that originally hampered them. And you see that the aerials just has such ridiculously incredible mobility. And do you want to do it together? Nah, this time I know I can do it. So, <clears throat> so you see that in a way, it feels like Solana's talking to herself, but she's definitely talking with Ariel back and forth. And Mira is like, who the heck are you talking to? <laughs> I think this is what she means here when she asks uh, Solana what's going on. Let's help Mira together, will we? And you can see that the uh, gun bits are acting both as projectile weapons and they're acting as shields. Oh wow, she's like so fast, it's like amazing. And can also uh, foresee the possible moves. It's like a sort of like a incredibly advanced uh, predictive technology. And and this girl's 
I think this the girl's the one who uh, notices that, oh, you are such a monster because it can predict future moves and also respectively destroys all the other enemy suits so they cannot move anymore. And he's like, are you actually a Gundam? You see it's there used as a shield. He's trying to get back up here. Oh yeah, this sweet one. Let me go back for a second. And he, he also says here, I'll be the one saying me right. He, he, he's in a way, he does love her. And he says it more clearly here, I'm the one who will stand by her side. Or at least he tries to. Even if it's with a duel. And then Till uh, says the perfect timing because that's when he's vulnerable. And you can see that uh, Choo Choo snipes him from far off. Ah, uh, this moment's so satisfying. It's like such a far away too. Oh man, that's so cool. And he's like, what? And oh man, they even toastified the gun. That's such a powerful weapon. Let's see. I'm trying to see what it looks like here. Yeah, you can see that the other the other mobile suits are supporting Choo Choo's mobile suit. <clears throat> Because uh, Choo Choo's uh, mobile suit lost its legs, so they had to uh, sort of do it with... Uh, the only way to get upright was to get the help of her friends and things. But yeah. Because the, on the only victory condition is uh, defeating the leaders... Uh, what do you call it? The, the bit on the head. So as long as they satisfy that, it's a clear victory for them. Everyone. And you can see that the system is still activated with Suleta. <laughs> and you see Shadik very, very clearly lost here. And here she, uh, on the live stream, she does her dance in order to advertise, which is super cute. And then they get the company to be uh, actually realized, which is great. I think there is a screenshot that shows that. And then uh, Solita apologized to the aerial here because she damaged it so much. He's like, well, I'm sorry I had to put you through the, all this. We're always doing this to you. Because she really respects the aerial. Um, like, it's, you know, the aerial is like her sibling, her family. She always feels so bad harming it. And, uh, yeah, really shows her close bond with it. And then the, the um, company is fully realized, as previously stated. And here's where you can see he, let's see, all signed. And he promises that I won't harm comp his, her company. And then he says that I should have dueled for, he should have been braver. And he says, no amount of whining will do anything for you. It's like... Her saying that even if he has regrets, he can't do anything. And he said, if only... Here we go. I'll become the, protect, become the holder and protect you myself. That is something that he does regret because he didn't have the courage. And she acknowledges his words because she was close with him. And she says that she, he's just an idiot. And here's where... Uh, also, more of a visual metaphor here is where she cuts the green tomato. You see, it's not ripe, right? Too little, too late. Well, yeah, so he's pretty much that green tomato, and he... And she cuts it off as it's not ripe. In a way, that also represents Shadik as he... In a way, was he able to become real, a realized... Like, he, he didn't trust her enough. And that led to him being cut off by Mirene. Phys uh, metaphorically and physically, so. And then the next episode is called Stricken Thoughts, so we'll see. I forgot who is voicing in this, in the, in the, in the ending uh, part, but we'll see how everything goes. We'll see what is the aftermath of Shadik losing against the Ariel in the Earthians. They may have formed their company, but what punishment will Shadik have to go through 
what will the pale house do because of the quote-unquote victory with their mobile suit even though the mobile suits were all like dismantled for you know by the other uh harem members uh, it is all it is all up in the air now since all the prospective people have fought guel has fought elon has fought and shadik has fought we don't know if there's going to be any other future duels in this season or not since all the guys are already pretty much accounted for so so yeah so we'll see how things go um yeah hope you guys really enjoyed uh me talking about this episode and yeah it was it wasn't really that detailed compared to other ones as it did was taken up mostly by the fight but we did get some little tidbits on shadik i also would have liked to known a bit more about his background rather than just his relationship with me Irene, about him liking her and not saying anything and she's like i mean i'm glad you're like my friend and all but uh <laughs> i don't know whether she actually likes him back in any way but she at least at least had a somewhat respect even if she did not trust him they at least had a slightly better relationship than between me and guel so we'll see what shadik does from now on especially since he still has nika under his wing so yeah we'll see uh, how things go uh from now on <laughs>